All right, so we'll go ahead and get started while some people still continue to trickle in. Um, thank you all for being here and welcome. This is our Connect, Focus, Grow info session. We're excited to chat with y'all today. We'll just go over a few quick webinar logistics and um, we'll have some opportunities to introduce ourselves as well, but please make sure you're continuing to drop your name and organization in the chat. We'll all reiterate that welcome. Um, I'm so excited you all found the time to be here today um, for the information regarding Connect, Focus, Grow, which we often refer to as a win-win situation internally. So I'm excited that you all could make it. Um, for the best experience here today, please mind your mute buttons, use reactions. Um, we like to liven it up in here, as well as um, use the chat when appropriate. And we will have a breakout session. So if you would please participate and bring your full selves into this space, I think we can really have a good time here this morning. Um, this is a space for workforce development practitioners, as well as youth development practitioners and corporations. So you have the opportunity to connect with people doing similar work to you. So as long as you are engaging, I'm sure opportunities can come about today. Now I'll pass it to Kiana. Hey, also my name is Kiana Bermudez. I am the Program Outreach and Support Manager here at Mentor Maryland DC. Um, I oversee most of our initiatives and programming for the greater Maryland region. And what that means is I support most of the folks in Maryland. I have a colleague who supports DC and some of the surrounding counties there. Um, but my main role is just ensuring that mentoring programs and youth development programs have the resources they need to serve our young people and ensure that we're doing mentoring at a high quality standard. So um, I'm your go-to for any of that. I'll pass it to Renee. Hi, everyone. My name is Renee Angelo Mock. I am the operations manager here at Mentor Maryland, D.C., and I am also um, the lead on all of our training efforts, uh, which is why you see me here today uh, as one of our Connect Focus Grow certified trainers. And I'm excited to talk about this training because it is so very special and cool. So, yeah, really excited. And I'll pass it to Rebecca. Um, my name is Rebecca Shipman. I am the Workplace Mentoring Vista here at Mentor Maryland, D.C. So I was really brought on to help and support with the implementation of Connect, Focus, Grow. Um, I would be happy to answer any and all questions, and I am the person who asked you all here today. So really on the outreach side of things, um, we are also joined by a few other teammates here today, Laura Green, our executive director, who is all things amazing, as well as Jeffrey Kearney, who is a, another VISTA who does outreach as well. And can I also just say that I think I see a mentor Maryland DC board member, uh, mm -hmm. Carol Norton in the room as well. I just wanted to acknowledge her along with any other board members that may be on the call. Awesome, thank you for that, Laura. And so if y'all need anything throughout this training, feel free to, uh, you can DM any of us, especially those who, um, Jeff and um, Laura who aren't facilitating. Um, but. Let's learn about what Mentor Maryland DC does. So we are a nonpartisan nonprofit that focuses on increasing the quantity and quality of mentoring relationships for young people, specifically across the state of Maryland and in DC. We are a part of a larger organization called Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership, and we are one of these local affiliates. Um, and what we do is that we serve as community-based experts and support youth development programs through providing training, research, public awareness, advocacy, and we really want to make sure that we're serving as that link between Mentor National um, and local mentoring organizations. So within that, our mission is to close that mentoring gap in the state of Maryland and D.C. Um, we do know that one in three young people report that they do not have a caring adult in their lives. So our goal is to change that and make sure that folks have caring adults and that mentoring programs have the tools to make sure that that happens. Our vision is to ensure that every young person has a caring adult relationship to thrive as adults. And we do this, as we've said, by supporting mentoring programs and organizations so that they can then support young people. I was on mute when I started talking. Uh, so a quick intro to Connect, Focus, Grow. 
um, before we do some other grounding and really get into the meat of, of it. But, you know, I talked, I said that technical code is a training. It is a training curriculum that employs a three-pronged approach. So we're talking about equipping mentors with the skills to effectively support the personal and professional growth of young people. So in a workplace situation. So that involves coaching supervisors on how to manage, you know, with a mentoring mindset, uh, how to guide young people towards engaging and levering mentoring opportunities. So young people who are getting into the workplace for the first time, how to be mentored and how to engage in those kind of opportunities when they're, especially when we have that supervisor supervisee relationship. So, and also uh, how to help uh, supervisors and mentees you know, get engaged with meeting their goals. So the goal of the Connect Focus Grow is about creating a mentoring mindset for industry professionals, for you know all kinds of workplaces, and increase positive outcomes for youth and for job seekers that are not necessarily traditionally seen as candidates. So this training serves young people who are entering the workforce or pre preparing for the workforce, which I know is a, a lot of work that you all do, um, preparing uh, super people who are going to be supervising young people or younger people for the first time. So maybe a workplace that's starting an intern program for the first time or is about to welcome youth works people for the first time, uh, situations like that. And for, for you all, people who are doing that work, so community-based and um, mentors who are employing uh, young people who are entering their first job as well. So we're really trying, Connect with Goals really to uh, hit young people holistically as young people are uh, entering the workforce. So before we jump into the meat of it, um, I'd like to offer a grounding activity. Um, and really orient ourselves with how important work is to our identities. Um, there is a, well, important note before we begin, you will receive all of these slides after, and you will be able to utilize all the buttons and hyperlinks within it. Um, so the 80,000 Hours Project is a organization that bases their work off of the idea that the average person, you and me, will spend 80,000 hours of our life at work. And the project is meant to help people find how they can do the most good and make the most impact in the world through their work. How will your career make an impact in the world? And we are flipping that question and thinking, how, who do you spend those 80,000 hours with? Um, and so I'd encourage you to keep that question in mind as we continue throughout this presentation and we will return to this idea at the end. Thank you for that, Rebecca. So as y'all are keeping in mind who you've spent a lot of time with um, in your uh, work life and in your job life, um, these you'll see on the screen, um, there are some characteristics of an effective supervisor. So while you're keeping that question in mind that Rebecca posed, I want you to now say out loud um, or type in the chat, think about the best supervisor you've ever had. Like someone that you were like, that person did it right. They did it well. And they made me want to continue working there. Um, which of these characteristics do you feel like they embodied? Feel free to shout them out in the chat or come off mute. We'd love to hear some of those stories. Adaptability, that's a good one. Anyone else? Really hoping more than one person had a good and supportive supervisor. There we go. Strong communication skills, self-awareness, teamwork, transparency, approachability. That's great. Fair and firm. I like that. Strong management skills. Friendly, that's a good one, yes. Goes into some of that approachability. Strong communication skills. Perfect. And y'all, don't be shy. Feel free to also maybe shout them out by name if you're like, they were so fantastic and they deserve to know it. So while y'all are continuing to do that in the chat, um, and feel free again to come off mute if you're like, I got to tell y'all this story. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what the difference is between a coach versus a supervisor. So as you can see listed, I won't read these directly to y'all, um, but we know that a supervisor tends to direct subordinates. 
um, set performance expectations and drive project completion. Whereas a coach and some of the characteristics that y'all were mentioning sound like y'all might have some great coaches in your lives. Um, coaches tend to focus on the individual. They know the career dreams and inspirations and aspirations um, and what type of work their employees enjoy the most. So they actually get to know you. They know their employees' strengths. And the key here is really that a coach works alongside with employees to find those career growth opportunities. So keeping those roles in mind, we're going to jump into um, what job market opportunities actually look like in our area here in Maryland and D.C. Thank you, Kiana. Yeah, so here at uh, Metro Maryland DC, we want to we are in touch with the Director of Workers Mentoring uh, at Mentor National. Connect Focus Grow is a national initiative. So and so is workplace workplace mentoring. So um, they uh, connect with us to share this data with us so we can direct our work as it relates to workplace mentoring, workforce development. And part of that was saying, you know, what is what does it look like as far as workforce opportunities for young people and the trends that are that are coming that are happening right now um, as it relates to the job market um, here specifically in Maryland and DC. So what that's looking like particularly for industries um, is design systems, generally warehousing sources, warehousing and storage, um, local government, home health care services, which I think a lot of us observationally, um, you know, in our neighborhoods, in our networks, we've probably had some um, interaction with and full service uh, culinary services. Uh, what's good to know about our area here in Mentor in DC is, or in Maryland and DC, is that jobs are at a steady incline uh, since 2022. We're on an upward trend. So that is good, great news. Um, but for those of you who are doing this work in Maryland and DC doing workforce development, I'm wondering if this data is matching what you are seeing as far as job opportunities. And let us know in the chat, please <clears throat> come off mute and let us know. But as we think about that, as this is a training that's related to you know preparing young people for the workforce and seeking out meaningful opportunities for them. Again, that's why it's important for us to get this data and information to you all as it suits for getting young people ready for the workplace. So yeah, let us know if this is ringing true to you as we get this information ongoing. This will um, be data that we continue to share out for you. Oh, so I'm seeing in chat where uh, we're working green jobs, conservation, restoration, and natural resources. Yeah, definitely. I think that's maybe not well listed specifically here. Something a new, a new kind of newer and expanding right as we're talking about changing in energy resources and things like that. That's cool and exciting. Yeah, continue to let us know um, about what that's looking like practically out in the field. Ankara says this lends well what they're doing in Frederick County. Cool. Loved again. It's great to look at data, but it's also great to hear from know what's what you guys are actually seeing on the ground and that that is matching up and then now that we know that right how can we collaborate and make it practical and specific for you so again we're talking about workforce development we're talking about mentoring what does that really mean <laughs> right what is it um as far as we thought thinking about mentoring in this specific setup what does it really mean so we're talking about a staff member typically a senior staff member, um, but can even be a peer staff member within a workplace that's invested in a mentee's success, right? Typically a, young, a younger person's success, somebody else's success, and uh, is, is committed to being in a mentoring relationship. And a mentoring relationship, right, is peer mentoring, uh, reg typical mentoring uh, aside, is just somebody being invested in somebody else's success in the context of a workplace. And for those of you who are doing the work of workforce development, you know there's a lot that for, we need to prepare for our young people to get uh, into the workplace, right? It's a lot of new skills for them to build. And that's why workplace mentoring matters. Uh, young people are, this is a transition for them. They're moving into a new experience of their lives that they're going to be doing <laughs> for the rest of their life, right? The world of work is the next stage of their life after they've been through K through, K through 12. So we're talking about older youth, um, we're talking about the transition from work and then potentially to career, right? Uh, maybe their passion or what's going to sustain them over time. Um, so this is a big transition for them. And as we know, as mentoring needs development professionals, mentoring That was very fine. Hey, everyone. 
I really thought it was my Wi-Fi, so. <laughs> I'm back. If anyone still wants to hear me talk about mentoring, still recording. Okay, great. So, was I cutting out before, Kim? You didn't scare me, guys. Out of nowhere. The other day I was on a meeting, my, my computer just went black, guys. Something's in the air in the mentor I'm really to see a technology game. We're going through it over here. Anyway, <laughs> so not only is workplace mentoring important for young people and their success, which I know everybody on this call is really invested in, um, there's a lot to be gained on the side of workplaces, right, and businesses, um, especially as it relates to employee engagement and retention and things like that. We were talking earlier about who's your best and favorite supervisor that you've ever had and those skills. Um, I always say that management is the job that everyone has that nobody wanted. Being a manager and a supervisor is hard. It's very hard. And managers and supervisors are, and this is real data, uh, the number one reason that most people leave their jobs. So we're talking about preparing managers and supervisors to make their workplaces better for everyone, not just their mentors, right? Supervisors are typically supervising more than one person. So we're talking about just improving workplaces, period, and relationships within the workplace, um, which is going to improve everybody morale but um mentoring is also something that we're finding that people in the workplaces and corporate uh, in corporate scenarios want to be engaged in and have opportunities for so um when employee engagement is up which human resources trends are showing that uh, employee engagement is down <laughs> so organizations are trying to uh, get are trying to prioritize employee engagement to have happier employees. And happier employees are retained employees um, who um, will, again, create higher morale in the workplace and all those kinds of things. So workplace mentoring really serves everyone. And can I focus grow in that same way? We'll do that as well. So we're going to get into that, um, the history of Connect Focus Grow and how uh, what it does now. So I'm gonna pass it back to Rebecca. So I'm just going to take us briefly through what Connect Focus Grow has already done. It was founded as an organization or an initiative called Opportunity Youth Thriving. And in 2018, that was rebranded to the National Mentoring Project, which piloted the program in five cities, including the DMV area. Um, originally, it was funded by AT&T and is currently funded by the Schultz Family Foundation, and it has resulted in partnerships with Starbucks, U Boston, and I really want to highlight J.P. Morgan Chase, who really delved into the curriculum and all it had to offer and created a career readiness mentoring program as well as a fellowship initiative, which gets young people into these um, workplaces but I think it really goes to show that every program is going to approach it differently and they're gonna use it the way it's going to serve them and they have the opportunity to really make it their own and, and let it thrive on its own. Um, and then specifically in the DMV area in Baltimore um, with the pilot program in 2018, Mentor partnered with the Civics Youth Build and the Urban Alliance. So. Both of those partnerships go back to those top 10 industry in terms of labor, um, and those were very successful partnerships. So that's just a quick little background. And then I'd like to show this two minute video, which does some testimonials of some young people who have actually gone through the program and hear what they have to say about it. I'm gonna check my share real quick that I have um, video sharing. Perfectly honest, let me do that real quick. Okay. Oh. Coming from where I'm from, you know, if you're not, you know, guy dribbling the basketball or you're not the guy who's on the sports team, 
You're just a kid. Someone telling you that they see something special in you, it makes you feel you were meant to be someone incredible. The National Mentoring Project was funded by the Schultz Family Foundation. In phase one of the project, we pilot tested innovative training that supports young people, supervisors, and mentors, community mentors, in supporting youth in thriving in the workplace. At the Schultz Family Foundation, um, we're working with Mentor to give young people the supports they need to be successful once they're on the job. The Connect, Focus, Grow training, it prepared me for the internship because it gave me a foundation to build off and it helped me in my relationships and networking. A lot of the participants, they are out of high school and trying to figure out what they're going to do next. They're disconnected from a lot of the opportunities. And so by coming to this training and getting connected with mentors, they've been able to get quite a bit of guidance, just not just from us, but from other caring adults. What Connect Focus Grows allows us to do is heighten the supervisor's awareness, heighten the employee's awareness of how they show up to interact with the other employees in the workplace. We believe big problems require cross-sector solutions. That's why Connect Focus Grow brings together companies and nonprofits to empower young people to be successful at work. The National Mentoring Project is a turnkey solution for employers. There are trainings, tools, online resources, materials to support the development of young people and young workers and to build a, a talent pipeline for employers for years to come. We've seen our young adults get employment and stay employed because they've had really great support in their workplaces. They've had mentors that they can reach out to. And it's really helped us build some of our and deepen our relationships with different employer partners who've been really excited about this type of training that's available. Watching both recipients uh, be able to go through this process and grow jointly, because as much as we think that the growth is in the mentee, there is a certain amount of growth that happens in the mentor. Challenged me in a way that didn't make it feel like my back was against the wall, but like that they just wanted to see how much I could grow. Awesome. Thanks for playing that, Renee. So what is Connect Focus Grow? What have we been talking about this whole time? So it is an interactive training curriculum that is aimed to change the workplace culture to best support current employees and the next generation of employees, which leads to, as we've talked about, increased work satisfaction, which benefits employees and employers. So as Renee mentioned earlier, it benefits all of us. So how great is that? So it focuses on three main components, um, as we've touched on a little bit, but I'm going to go a little more deeply into it. So connect, which is that relationship building piece, ensuring folks have the tools to build those meaningful relationships. Focus, which is goal setting and learning how to leverage those strengths, identify strengths, leverage them, um, and enhancing those skills as well. And then we have grow, which is practicing that growth mindset um, and how to utilize what we've learned through those other steps as well. Uh, to expand access to new opportunities. So what does it mean after you've gone this, through this curriculum? How do you apply this knowledge as well? So this curriculum can be tailored to young people or mentees, mentors, and supervisors in the workplace. So those three different categories of folks as well. And as we know, we've all been mentees or mentors, whether we uh, wanted to or knew it or not, right? We've all been informal mentees or mentors at some point. So having the tools to do this effectively um, is great. Um, so these different roles, as we know, um, can you change the slide? Cool. Thanks. So these are the different roles um, within that it can be tailored to. So within young people, um, young people's roles are really to engage and be present and focus in on what they need to grow to be able to um, be successful within this workplace. Mentors or um, folks who are supervising or coaches, as we um, were also talking about, but mentors, folks are directly working with young people. Um, ideally, they would have more experience than the mentee 
And their role is really to be able to practice that mentoring mindset, ensure that they are supporting the young person, um, that they're supporting their career development and growth, and that they're, um, and as we talked about when we were talking about um, these, those characteristics of those successful coaches that we've all had in our lives, they get to know them, they know what's going on, and through that, they can help them overcome um, any personal and professional obstacles that may be in their way. And for supervisors, um, what this role may look like within CFG or Connect Focus Row is supporting the young person's passion, skills, exploration, figuring out, um, using their social capital to support the young people, uh, recognizing the employee's assets, and so supporting them um, through, once again, that growth piece and identifying strengths and assets, and then promoting the mentoring relationship. Once again, understanding that mentoring is happening, whether we know it or not, how can we make sure we're doing that at an excellent level? So what is it doing? <laughs> Once it's done, you know, what is it doing for the workplace and um, for the people who are going through it? So it's helping everybody in the workplace recognize young people's assets. Um, as we know, there's a big generational divide happening right now that's affecting the lens of which people view young people, period, but particularly when they come into the workplace. Um, building, again, we're talking about generational, building those multi-generational relationship and helping all those generations meet each other where they are at um, through um, an asset-based kind of lens, right? A, a strengths-building kind of lens and helping um, not just those mentors and supervisors identify uh, the young people's strengths, but helping youth do that uh, for themselves as well uh, and allowing them to see their own social, social capital. So like Kiana was saying, this isn't a training just for mentors and supervisors. It's for young people as well. There's three different versions of it. Um, and the power for young people to go through it and see, have that positive lens for themselves as well. And engaging young people as leaders uh, for youth to have um, access to their own power and not just about uh, men, uh, mentors and supervisors sharing power, but youth um, accessing their own power, engaging in their own power, um, and utilizing that power and being leaders in their workplaces. So, I mean, I'm hyped. That's super exciting. And then, so the actual experience of it and what it's like. So, it's a three hour training, which is long. Um, I'm not going to say it's not long. Um, it's, it's a, but it's a really engaging training. Uh, it can be done in. Hey, everyone. I guess this is just me. And I'm getting no notice from my computer that why this should be happening to me. I'm back. Talking about this great three-hour training. <laughs> so this is three-hour training. Um, ideally, it's done in person. It's the most fun in person and engaging in person. As And I'm not, to be clear, I love doing virtual training. So, and I'm can make, for those of you who have been, a virtual training very exciting. Uh, but this one is really built to be in person, but we can adapt it for a virtual situations. As we know, there are virtual workplaces who workplaces that are entirely virtual. So it can be adapted for that scenario. Um, like I was saying, it is a very energizing training. It's built to be that way. I'm um, considering the length of it. And, you know, we've, we've already been asked, like, is this something that can be broken down? It's really not built for that, um, for the kind of learning goals for the, for the participants. It's really um, best suited for those three hours, but to keep, you know, people engaged in those three hours, it's really energizing. Of course, those breaks and things uh, built in, but it's also really rapport building for all those people in, engaged because uh, everybody who's going to be attending um, is going to be, you know, people within the workplace, right? A bunch of managers, a bunch of young people. So all of those kinds of things are taking into consideration in uh, the training. And so people are going to come out of it with this shared experience, this shared learning uh, that's, you know, going to end up being, of course, one of the benefits of the training. Uh, Rebecca talked a little bit about this, but um, as much as this training is a very, uh, very specified curriculum, it is personalized for your market. So this is something that uh, that we do when, um, as facilitators, that we ensure that the things that we can adjust <laughs> to adapt for your um your workplace or you know for your young people for those contexts we make those adjustments so it makes the most most sense for them and like i said there's three different versions so there's already curriculums for each of those um audiences young people supervisors and managers um but the, for those other personalizations um as it makes sense for those for your workplace or um, for your young people we do that for you um, every participant leaves with a really nice handbook it's like a 30 page handbook um with 
some of the tools that we go over in those three hours. So everyone has, um, it's not something where it's on every individual to keep their own notes and things like that. Everyone's going to leave basically with a toolkit um, to apply the learnings that they went through through the training. Um, and experienced trainers. Um, this, I mean, I'm talking about myself, obviously. I said that I'm one of the trainers, but Keanu is one of our trainers as well. I don't want to interrupt because I know as soon as Renee gets back on, they'll be saying the most important thing you've ever heard <laughs> and just jump right back into it. Um, but I will, here we go. Perhaps, well, um, 10, 10, to, 10 to 60 participants per training. Um, and as we talked about with who the audience is, that can be broken out into young people being a group of trainees, supervisors being a group of trainees, and the mentors being a group of trainees, or it could be done for a company. So there are ways to build it out so that it fits into your schedule and your demographic. Um, wonderful. And then to talk a little bit about how it can benefit your workplace. Connect, Focus, Grow was created to develop and or strengthen the ability to build successful relationships. And I've talked to a number of youth workforce development professionals, and they talk about the fact that without the relationships, the kids wouldn't the kids, the young people, excuse me, um, wouldn't keep coming back. And so it's very important to have the ability to build those relationships, intergenerational relationships. It builds leadership, diversity, and a learning culture. So companies who have workplace mentoring programs build up the diversity. Um, and then I'll kind of jump down to that bottom one to say that in addition to building up the diversity, it's because they're building up a generation of workers who are getting those skills early on. So new innovative um, industries are able to choose how to and what skills they want to cultivate within their workplace. So this is the way it really benefits the companies as well as the young person because all of a sudden they have transferable skills and skills for a um, evolving economy. Um, it increases employee satisfaction. Again, that's both within the youth and within the mentor. Um, I can't recall exactly the exact number, but this is proven that when people support a young person and mentor them through the career, all of a sudden they are able to see the importance of what they are doing and they feel more satisfied. And again, employee satisfaction turns into retention, which again benefits the employee, in, excuse me, employer. Um, and then lastly, it reduces training costs. If you're able to cultivate your own job market, um, you spend less time bringing in outsiders to do the trainings and things of that sort. Yep. And then I really want to um, hone in. I know we've mentioned it a few times, but increasing that employee satisfaction and retention. Again, we know that giving um, being in a mutual relationship where we are growing, pouring into someone, having someone pour back into us, even being a mentor and a supervisor who's trained with that mentoring mindset um, and giving back even that itself um, increases employee satisfaction and um, gives us that uh, feeling of like, oh, my job matters and that I am supporting someone and mentoring someone. Um, so that is these are some of the overall benefits of the workplace. Rebecca is going to lead us through a quick little exercise um, on what this might look like in terms of in, in action. 
So I'm going to bring us back to that 80,000 hours. Um, and I'm going to put us in a few breakout rooms. And again, this is the opportunity for you all to connect with each other. So if your conversation steers a little bit away from the questions and more into workplace development, that's all right. Um, but I am going to ask you, how have the people you worked with impacted you and you them? Do these relationships extend beyond professionalism? So thinking about how often does a situation or a person at work affect something within your personal life? And how could you shift your perspective or what skills would suit you in maybe making that experience better? How could you approach relationships differently in the workplace so that when these things bleed into your personal life, which with 80,000 hours, one day they will. Um, how can we shift our perspective to better handle those situations? And I will send us into our breakout rooms. Yana, can you add the um, questions in the chat? I can't really see the chat with my screen. Yeah. And it so, looks like a few folks haven't joined their rooms. It's just us now. I um, moved them to the waiting room. They're clearly not on. Okay, so I can take over screen sharing. Um, I'm cool screen sharing. Um, I think I think it's just resources and stuff left. Okay, how long should they be in there? Um, I would chat to. I can do a little broadcast. Did you add the questions in the chat? I can did you see the question. Can you see my chat when I pull it up like right now? No, no. You did great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, we're in this. Yeah. All right. Let me, how do I broadcast? I don't know how to use broadcast. Broadcast message. Hi everyone. Two, two more minutes. Two yeah, more I see. Minutes. Yeah, two. that'll be like five minutes total. Um, wrap up your thoughts, and we'll come together to to discuss. Right. Yes. Yeah. And like we can. Okay. If they I don't have broadcasted. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm glad you can see it. Cool. I know that was my one thought when I you don't say, know how to use Zoom. <laughs> me neither. Um, when you say everyone and they're in breakout rooms, it goes to their breakout rooms. Is that correct? Okay. <laughs> okay. I think they can see the chat though. Yeah, I do too. I okay. Do too. Um, can you move that person who just entered the waiting room into a breakout? Can I? 
they should be in room four. Hi, Golda, I am moving you into a breakout room now. Well, Golda, can you accept the invitation to the room for? Is that something that's popping up for you? All right, it is okay because I'm about to close all the rooms. Are okay. Ready to discuss with everyone? Okay. It'll give them a minute warning. Okay. And so I'll facilitate that. Okay. Hi, all. Welcome back. Welcome back. And if you're just joining for the first time, we're just coming back from breakout rooms. So that's where everyone is. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I think we have about 20 seconds until everyone else has joined us. Four more seconds, three, two, one, situation. All right, and everyone else should be back. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hoping you had some fruitful conversations. We're gonna chat about it a little bit in a large group. So I'd love to hear if anyone had a particularly thrilling um, breakout room. Um, how, what did you all share? Um, how could you shift your perspective to make more of your working experience? Um, if you're willing to put it in the chat, or I would really appreciate if someone would come off mute and, and just let the larger group know what you all talked about. We barely got through introductions in our group. Oh dear. <laughs> But uh, we are a mix of direct service providers and managers of social workers and other managers of direct service providers. That's that's pretty much as far as we got. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you all another question. That being, um, when I send out the follow up emails, um, I have the option to make your emails available so that other people can see them or not. And I wonder if you all would like to be able to connect with each other after the meeting is over and if I could, okay, make your emails more public. Okay, wonderful. Was anyone able to get through at least one or a few of the questions that wanna share? I'll break the ice. I was trying to fall back to let someone else do it, but if it helps, I'll go ahead and jump in. Lauren also in my small group shared a great um, testimony as well from Towson University. So I'm not sure I don't want to put her on the spot, but I just wanted to acknowledge her because we got booted out before we got to say goodbye to each other. But I shared um, when, when I was in my 20s, one of the first jobs I had was for Perry Ellis International. And I was so excited because they were the fifth largest menswear de designer in the country. And I worked in global licensing and I had a very strong, wonderful relationship with my supervisor who happened to be a Ukrainian uh, American person. Um, and we were, you know, very great working relationship. I felt fulfilled. I, I loved the job, but I was having struggles with a colleague 
actually. And because of that colleague, it was really becoming a place where I didn't want to go every day. You know, I'm in my early 20s. I have my rose colored glasses on and I'm like, I get to go work at Perry Ellis in New York, the greatest city in the world every day. And then this one person was just making it like, I really don't want to be here. I started job searching quietly. I, I kind of quiet quit, as they say. And I went to my supervisor and I just told her what was happening because I was trying to, you know, be a big girl, put my big girl pants on and handle it myself. And it just wasn't working. And I told my um, supervisor. And when I tell you, she just like immediately came in and like corrected the climate, corrected, corrected the culture for my colleague, really course corrected her. She was out of line. She was kind of rogue. And thing like order was restored. And as a result of that, I stayed there like five and a half years. And in my early twenties, I did not think I was going to stay anywhere for five and a half years. I found out what it meant to be fully vested. Like I, I had nice little matching with my 401, you know, like my retirement plan had a little cushion because I stayed for five and a, and a half years. And, and I acquired a skill and a tool in my tool belt and a whole industry of licensing that I never would have had I not stayed and it was all because of the wonderful relationship I had with my supervisor and really how she handled that troubled si situation. And um, and then, you know, it made it a great place for me to learn and grow. So that was something that I shared in my group. That's really awesome, Laura. Thank you for sharing that and for just sharing your personal experience with like literally the impact of a person advocating for you and caring for you and showing up for you in the workplace. It's really good. Anyone else? Hello, everyone. I, my name is Richard. I am presently with an organization called Best Kids here in DC. Uh, we partner with several organizations, provide services for the mentees in our program. And I particularly want to give a shout out to my program director, uh, his name is Carl Scott, and um, he's an exception because I've, I've done things with kids prior to my coming into the program. But what this individual stands out as, in my opinion, is that he gives you the leverage to suggest new things all the time. And he has a, a very uh, open-door policy that is different from... Usually people, you know, managers, directors will say, I have an open door policy, but this individual walks the talk when he says he has an open door policy. And I think that in our field as, you know, um, providers, we need to encourage more of such. Uh, we usually have individuals that we work with, associates, colleagues who have brilliant ideas, but depending on what, uh, stage in the pyramid in terms of organization that they may be we don't usually listen to them so you know it's important or is imperative that as we all work towards bettering the lives of other individuals that we look in in in, in the organization and welcome some of these ideas because uh that's that's where you know the difference is there are individuals who have brilliant really brilliant ideas and if we open that opportunity for them, they will make a difference. So uh, just kudos to to Mr. Scott for the job that he's doing. And I really would love that we encourage that in our respective organizations. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that, Richard, um, and for giving. Um, I think you said their name is Mr. Scott. They're flowers. Um, that's really awesome that you have someone like that. And also just seeing how it's opened up opportunities, not only for you, but for others that they've influenced. That's really great. Any last folks, any last takers? I'll share um, one kind of theme from our conversation um, was having people um, who supported our own growth kind of professionally and personally um, and how impactful that is kind of in both of those spheres um, someone who is committed to making sure that you learn um, what is relevant to your position, but then also that helps you kind of achieve those future goals um, and how positive relationships at work uh, can positively affect the rest of your life and how if there's tension or negative relationships at work, you can sometimes carry that with you um, outside as well. 
Thank you for sharing that, Kara. So at this point, I think we will move on. Um, one of the things that we want and what Mentor is founded off of is the sharing of resources and making sure everyone has what they need to succeed. Um, so we have some resources. Again, this um, presentation will be shared out with you after the call. Um, if you would jump ahead two slides, Kiana. These are all hyperlinks, and this is a great place to get started. And I will turn it over to Kiana um, to give a little bit more in depth of what you can find in each of these supplements. Absolutely. So as Rebecca said, we have all sorts of resources if you've ever been to any of our other spaces as well. Um, but we just wanted to highlight a few um, key ones. So we provide um, technical assistance, which um, you'll see the NMRC listed there. We are a part of the National Mentoring Resource Center. Um, one of the key bodies of work that we use are the elements of effective practice for mentoring. That is one of our biggest bodies of work um, and it focuses in on the best practices and standards um, within mentoring. So if you are a mentoring program, person interested in mentoring, it lays out all of that out. And in addition to that, there is a supplement which is uh, listed right there, the workplace mentoring supplement, which focuses in on specifically best practices within workplace mentoring. And our follow-up email will, will be sure to share that resource. And we also have to the right of that, our workforce development guide. This is launching soon from our direct office, specifically for Mentor Maryland, DC. We're really excited to launch it. Um, and y'all will be some of the first folks to receive that resource. So we are really excited for that. Um, we also have um, some other resources that we'll share through our national office. We'll share all of these out in our email, including um, some different trainings that might be of interest. Um, but if y'all, oh, sorry, my, um, there we go. But if y'all are interested and want to get started, we're your folks. We would really love to learn. Does it sound interesting to you? Do you want to learn more? Do you want to get started? please, please, please um, let us know in the chat. Feel free to drop your favorite emoji um, and we'll be sure to get in contact with you to get moving and get started on implementing Connect, Focus, Grow um, as a curriculum into your workplace. Um, our emails are listed there, mine and Renee's emails. Rebecca will drop those in the chat momentarily. You'll wanna make sure you hang on to those. Um, but we are super lucky that we have interest in Connect, Focus, Grow. Um, right now, we're in the middle of preparing contracts to implement CFG, as we call it, but our schedule is filling up, so please make sure um, that you're moving quickly to get in touch with us. We want to make sure that we're prioritizing this, um, and if this is something that you want to be able to budget into your organization's calendar this year, we really want to make sure we're prioritizing that, so please get in touch with us and let us know in the chat if this is something that you want us to reach out to you about. And I also want to just point out that there's only so many Connect Focus Grows trainers in the United States, um, in our nation, and only a few folks are trained each year. Our cohort this year, I think, was only four folks, um, and Renee and I were in that group. And so we support Mentor National in their Connect Focus Grow training efforts as well. Um, we get called in to support people on a national level. Um, and implementing these trainings. So again, our calendar does get filled up with things from all over the nation. Um, so just make sure that y'all are the folks filling up our calendar before they do. Um, but we're really thankful that y'all are in this space. We also had an adopting a mentoring mindset training that happened about a week or two ago. That is on our YouTube. We'll include that as well in our follow-up resources. The mentoring mindset is a really pivotal piece of what we do within Connect Focus Grow as well. Um, but again, we are so glad that y'all are here. We'll make sure to share all those resources out, but I'm gonna pause here and see if anyone has questions that we can help answer. Um, and we'll hang out here for a moment. So thank y'all again for taking your time to be with us this afternoon. Thank you all so much. Um, I know we came up on 1230, um, but we will be here to answer questions. Absolutely. But totally understand if y'all have meetings to run to. We're all very busy. Any questions, any questions, we'll hang out here and I'll stop sharing my screen so I can see all your faces. 
I just wanted to thank you. I'm sorry I had to drop out for a part of it for another meeting, um, but mm -hmm. I really enjoyed being a part of it. Thank, thank you so much, Carol. It's thank good to put you. a name with a face. I know. I'm so happy to as well. well. I'm looking forward to talking with you again soon. Bye. Have a wonderful thank day. You. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you all for being here. Make sure you get those emails and we will be sure to reach out to y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you, Lauren. Yes, we have so many resources, BJ. Um, our role here is literally just to support mentoring programs. Um, are you thinking specifically around workplace mentoring or around mentoring in general? Um, basically helping them get a job because a lot of our youth who are within like 15, 16-ish. You said you're with the Choice Program, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. So uh, Renee and I both used to work with the Choice Program as well. So <laughs> we're quite familiar. Um, yes. Because when awesome. they apply for jobs, a lot of times the employers don't want to give it to them just because of their age and like, oh, we already yeah. got a youth here. So that's kind of like the barrier they're running into in like PG County area. Like, yeah. like oh, we already got enough youth. We want some older people. And they try to wait to the summertime to try to get a job or like when the college kids go back. But it's just like a hit and miss for them. Yeah. Um. So fun fact, I used to be the service coordinator for the PG area. So this is fun. Really? Um, yeah, I was the uh, SC for PG South, or Central, sorry, for PG Central. Oh, when did you leave? Um, I left in 2020, I think. Okay, I came in 22. Yeah, yeah, so we missed each other by a little bit. Maybe 2021, I'm, I, it's hard to remember. When COVID. Um, yeah, it was, it was during COVID, but we were starting to do some home visits. So it must have been 2021 when I left. Okay. But we do have, um, we're going to actually share this out in our email or follow up email. We'll make sure you get it. Um, but there is um, a bit, there's a big resource page. I'm not going to take credit for it, for it. It's from Mentor National that specifically talks about um, the workplace equity pledge. But at the bottom of this page, which I, again, will make sure you get it. Um, it has a like checklist specifically around workplace mentoring. It has that supplement I talked about, which are best practices, like how to make sure young people are successful within workplace mentoring and are, you know, built up to have success in not only being in a workplace, but also attaining those jobs and such and have the skills to do so. Um, and also like talks about the value of building social capital and stuff. So um, I think those items um, will be most helpful um, and when it comes to age, I know that certain counties have certain restrictions, so I can't, I'm not super helpful in that. I'm not super familiar. I don't remember, um, what the restrictions are specifically in PG County, but what I can say is, um, we like research shows that the more we prepare young people for those interviews, the more we, um, you know, prepare young people for being in a workplace mentoring environment, um, the more successful they are. So we can make sure we at least give you some tools to start with. Okay. Cause with them is not like age restrictions is more mm -hmm. like the employer just doesn't want to because they mm -hmm. have other kids their age. It's just like, all right, I have enough youth already. I just don't want to, you know, hire any more youth. Yes. Yeah. So it's almost sounds like kind of what we were talking about with the labor market, like mm -hmm. that labor market saturated. What other ones can we maybe look at, um, which will um, we'll share out these slides. And um, that breakdown that we shared was actually, um, I think we had a breakdown for Maryland and DC, um, PG and Montgomery County were actually the two that we had the most data from. Um, Good, so we'll those are my sure areas. We... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, are you, sorry. Are you in Central? Are you the PG Central person? No, okay, so you were here with Becca, right? Yes, you were I under was Becca. here with Becca. So I'm the new Becca. <laughs> You're the new Becca. Okay, lovely. Well, great to meet you and um, connect. That's nice. Yeah. I don't think I uh, know anyone who's still there aside from like uh, upper management or I guess you were in upper management, but like Eric and I don't know if Kelly's still there, but yeah. Uh, Kelly Quinn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she's still there. Um, mm -hmm. But in that PG region, when I came, there was nobody in the PG region and that. Um, yeah. All of us left. <laughs> yes. Y'all yes, all left. <laughs> the start Sorry. Scratch. Well, actually there was someone right after me. Um, but... Brie? No. Brianna? Right there. 
wasn't it when I started she was the SC after me but I don't think she lasted very long yeah like when I came I came to nothing at all but just like for you bless your heart I'm so sorry on the case low and you have to rebuild everything yeah it's well good. please feel free to reach out to me like my job here is literally to ensure that mentoring programs have what they need to succeed we have all sorts of trainings we have all sorts of resources um i can connect you with our lead in pg i'm actually um while i cover most of maryland pg is actually considered in our dc area mm-hmm. um so i can connect you with that lead um the program manager for that area they hope we host round tables where we get folks who work all over the youth development sector. And that would be a great opportunity where like those people might know who's hiring and who's hired their young people and stuff. So PG is unique in that they meet monthly, all the rest of us meet quarterly, but PG is like, we want to meet all the time. Um, so I'll make sure you get plugged in. Oh, that's and great. I'll go ahead and add this, especially considering your location that what we've been talking about is like There's two sides of the CFG recruitment, one side being the programs, and then the other side, increasing the quantity of businesses who are willing to take on you. So like we have the businesses who say yes, but we only want a certain number. So if we just have more of those, so we're working on doing like networking events in the coming future with PG County specifically. And so I'll make sure that you are getting that information as well. That is wonderful because we do have a lot of kids in that PG South, which you are familiar with, Mm -hmm. in that PG Central area that really are looking for jobs. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for asking the questions, right? I love this conversation. So that's really wonderful. Yes. If you don't ask, you're not going to get an answer. (laughs) That's it. Absolutely. So keep an eye out for that email, BJ, and um, we'll be in touch. I'll make sure I get your email and I will connect you with, his name is Dayon, um, who's my counterpart. I'll connect you with Dayon for all the PG stuff as well. Thank you. Do you want me to put my email again in the chat before I log off? Um, sure, that would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, BJ. Awesome. Got it. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right. Rose, are you hanging on because you have a question? If not, we're going to end the meeting. Okay. Awesome. Thank you all. Bye.